What's the difference between American police cars and regular cars? What's the most important feature a police officer looks for in a car? And why are police cars called squad cars? We're answering these questions and more. Plus, we're looking at the fastest police pursuit vehicle in the U.S. today. Let's get going. You've seen those awesome chase scenes a thousand times in movies. Police cars flying down the street in hot pursuit of fugitives or heroes. So one thing we all know is that police cars need to be fast. They also need to be tough enough to keep going after a few knocks, and even after being rear-ended. And if there's one thing police cars do more than high-speed chasing, it's idling. They need to keep the car going to keep all those lights flashing, otherwise the battery will go dead. So police cars need a beefed up alternator and cooling system too. Add an ignition lock because they don't want someone just driving away with a car. Then of course there are the modern must have toys like big screens, navigation and driver's assist. Police cars also need gas. Most officers ensure that they have at least half a tank of gas at all times or a fully charged battery if it's an electric vehicle. You heard right, police departments are now testing EV vehicles. One officer in Fremont was in hot pursuit in his Tesla doing 120 miles on the freeway when he realized he was down to six miles of battery charge. He called for backup, but lucky for him, the chase was abandoned in the interest of public safety. Police vehicles have come full circle as they begin to introduce EV cars to the fleet. The fastest police vehicles in the U.S. right now is a hybrid SUV, the Ford Interceptor to be exact. More about the test later. The first police vehicle in America was an electric vehicle, although it wasn't chosen for speed, and that's why it didn't last long. Prior to motor cars, police used horses, bicycles, or motorcycles. After all, you can't arrest the bad guys if you can't catch them. Let's take a quick tour of the story of police cars. Then we'll see how these evolved into the current lineup of police cars offered by America's largest car companies. The date is 1899. The place is Akron, Ohio. City authorities purchased the first ever American motor vehicle. It has space for 12 people, as it is designed to transport a squad of police officers to a crime scene. This is why it's called the squad car and how the term originated. It's a four horsepower electric wagon with a top speed of 18 miles an hour and a range of 30 miles when the batteries are fully charged. So it's not going to be chasing anyone anytime soon. But it has a gong that is pretty dramatic. It's also got an onboard holding cell for prisoners. This is useful as its first assignment is to pick up a drunk guy. It's not very long before the world's first squad car nearly comes to a dramatic end. An angry mob steals it and pushes it into the Ohio Canal. This is during the worst ride in Ohio's history. A six-year-old is allegedly attacked and the mob wants revenge on the alleged assaulter who was in police custody. The squad car is pulled out of the canal and repaired, but its days are numbered. The rise of organized crime and mafia gangs in Akron means the police need faster gasoline-driven cars. A few years later in Detroit, Police Commissioner Frank Kroll wants to add a car to his unit. When his request is turned down, he buys a Packard out of his own pocket. Within a few months, the city reimburses him and purchases another six vehicles. The motorcycle is popular with police, but now more and more police cars are appearing. The first patrol cars look identical to civilian cars. The PD sign is written by hand. In 1912, they installed the first radio. Now it's the 1920s. Prohibition has boosted organized crime activities. High-speed chases with rum runners and mafia gangs mean the police need better gear. Auto manufacturers rise to the challenge. Fast vehicles are fitted with machine gun ports, armor plating, and bulletproof glass. But then it's the Great Depression of the 1930s, and budgets are slashed. The 1932 Ford Model B flathead V8 becomes popular partly because it's affordable compared to similar cars in its class. Road systems are expanding. Police are getting more organized. 
Red lights begin to appear on fenders and rooftops. Rotation lights appear in 1948. By now radios are working properly and walking beats are largely abandoned. It makes financial sense. One policeman in a car with a radio can cover the same ground as several cops walking the beat. Ford becomes the first manufacturer to offer a dedicated police vehicle. They take note of what the common options police departments choose and bundle them together. This is pretty much how it's still done today. Most police vehicles start out as normal cars, but modifications are made that set them apart. Manufacturers focus on speed and maneuverability, so most of these police cars will outrun the standard cars you find at the dealership. In 1950, the Michigan State Patrol begins testing patrol cars. At first, they test only the cars with the lowest quotations. Soon, competition is so fierce that there is little difference in cost. So testing is expanded to include all vehicles to make sure the best are chosen. Testing speeds are initially done with tape measures. The color of the cars also becomes more important. The police want to help the public identify them so they look at colors that aren't used as often, which was black and white at the time. Black and white paint is also cheaper. During the 1960s, half the police cars in big cities are Fords, but its popularity gives way to Chrysler, Plymouths, and Dodges. While the police battle to keep cities safe, car makers battle each other to provide the best cars for the city's law enforcers. It's the 1980s. The Ford LTD Crown Victoria and Chevy Caprice are the most popular police cars. Then SUVs start showing up alongside the long-favored four-door sedan. Now it's 2020. Let's take a look at the latest Michigan State Police report to see the current lineup of police cars in America and why they're preferred by the police. Testing is done at the Chelsea Proving Grounds in Grattan Raceway. Chelsea track is 4.7 mile long, 140 mile an hour oval, which allows the police to accurately test vehicle acceleration, top speed, and braking. The report doesn't endorse the cars, it just shares results so officers can choose the most suitable car for them and do their jobs effectively and safely. So what are the top things they need in 2020? First, and no surprise, we're looking at speed and acceleration. That doesn't change. Cop cars are built to catch offenders. They need to accelerate faster and stop over shorter distances, so they need stronger brakes. The MSP set basic criteria, which require vehicles to accelerate from 0 to 124.6 seconds and reach 120 miles an hour in 1.7 miles. In 2020, the new police intercept utility is the fastest police pursuit vehicle in the USA. It is the fastest 0 to 60 and 0 to 100 and the fastest lap speed at 136.47. It beat the all-wheel Dodge Charger, which clocks in at 137.10. Next up is safety. Most of the cars come with structural reinforcements and optional extras like ballistic panels. The Ford Interceptor is designed for a 75 mile an hour rear impact crash. It's the only car in the world that can boast this. Most of the cars also now have threat detection and alert monitors. If you're sitting in the Dodge and it detects a bad guy, you can program it to make a noise. The lights start flashing, windows roll up, and the doors lock. Honestly, that should be enough to scare any intruder away. We've mentioned before that the cars need to be durable and idle for long periods of time without overheating. This means larger radiators and alternators, and also more power to keep the lights going. Police officers also get heavier duty seats to accommodate their equipment and perhaps some of the many donuts that they eat. Ford's onboard electrical equipment is powered using the lithium iron hybrid battery. So the gas can be shut off most of the time, reducing idling time. It's not a plug-in, but it can run the air conditioning lights, computer, and even a radar gun without needing to idle the engine. Four, affordability. This never changes. It also includes fuel consumption too. Then five, space and lots of it. Cops carry a lot of stuff. Six, connectivity. Big integrated screens give a great view to track bad guys. This also leaves the dashboard free for donut boxes and stuff. So we've seen that police cars are stronger and faster than ordinary cars. This really gives them an advantage out on the road. Of course, if you were in Dubai, police cars are even faster. The Dubai Police Department won the Guinness World Record for having the world's fastest police cars in service. 
The Bugatti Veyron is just one of a fleet of supercars. One of the problems Dubai has is people want to be arrested so they can drive in the police car. Not sure what to say to that except maybe, me too. You know how in the movies a cop will leave his police car unattended and then a criminal jumps in and drives off? That might have been true in the old days. But actually, these days that's pure Hollywood. It can't happen in real life due to a cop car feature called Run Lock. It allows police officers to remove the keys but still leave the car running to keep powering the radio, lights, and surveillance system without draining the battery. So if you ever get tempted to steal a police car, just don't. The system automatically turns off the engine. If it even detects that the driver is trying to shift out of park without a key, you'll fail dismally and my guess is you might even be charged with attempted theft or larceny. Ever wonder how bulletproof cop cars are? Most American police cars that are newer than 2015 are generally bulletproof, but there's a small amount of older cars which aren't. In March 2016, it was announced that police vehicles would have doors and windows that can prevent penetration of armor-piercing bullets. The Ford Police Interceptor Utility SUV doors can withstand ammunition that's more powerful than what U.S. soldiers carry. It can block a 30 caliber bullet from an AK-47 or other powerful rifle. The ballistic panels nearly cover the entire door and is made of two layers. The inner layer is made of aramid fiber, which is similar to Kevlar, a fabric that is five times stronger than steel. And the outer layer is made of ballistic grade ceramic tile. The combined strength of these layers means that the same area can be shot at twice and still withstand penetration. In 2017, all NYPD patrol cars got outfitted with bullet resistant window inserts at the front and sides. Of course, bulletproofing a cop car isn't cheap. Even the lightest protected of armor can run anywhere from twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. Something else to consider is the extra weight. Bulletproof materials are heavy and thick. The armor alone can add an extra four hundred to twelve hundred pounds. So now you have to reinforce the suspension, frame, tires, and some other components. Also, a heavier weight means the car will require more fuel, and it will slow down the cop car in hot pursuit. So, further reason for a more powerful engine. When it comes to the average civilian car, we gauge the car's age and usage in miles, and the odometer is usually the first place to check. But did you know that police cars are measured in hours instead, like boats? Each police car is equipped with an hour meter to keep track of the hours that the car has been on, whether it's driving or even idling, and that makes sense. If you consider how often police keep their cars idling in a park or neutral, ever wonder why officers leave their cars on even when they aren't sitting inside? Well, police cruisers are fitted with a lot of electronic and equipment. We're talking about laptop computers and radio systems, and all these require a cool environment to operate correctly. So cops often keep their cars running to maintain climate control and protect the equipment from extreme temperatures. Another reason is that computers must be constantly connected to keep officers informed of what's happening in the area. But it's not just about the computers and devices. Police officers are also first responders trained for certain types of medical emergencies. They're not paramedics, but they do care carry certain medications that must remain cool to be effective. For example, Narcan, which is for opiate overdose, if the car is turned off and the medicine gets exposed to extreme temperature, then the officers risk losing large doses of necessary medication. Also, some police units also have service dogs. Canine cruisers must be equipped with special equipment, including a modified cooling system to provide proper ventilation and climate for the furry cops. One thing is for certain, if you're looking to buy a retired cop car, don't just go by mileage alone. Mileage itself won't tell you how long the car's been idling. Since police cars do a lot of idling, the true age of a retired cop car will actually be a multiple of the recorded mileage. It's a common question. Should you buy a retired police car? If you haven't seen my video on Ford police cars, check it out. Let's talk about the siren. More recently, police cars have been using a new technology. It's called the Rumbler, and it's proving to be effective in dense areas with heavy traffic. The sound is a mix of siren and a low frequency tone that you can literally feel from inside your car. The system uses a pair of high output subwoofers to amplify the low frequency tone, enabling you to literally feel it from 300 feet away. Imagine how your heart would beat after that. Police cars use different sounds for different situations. Talking about the whale, yelp, and howl. For example, when a police car is driving at high speed approaching the intersection, and it uses the classic wail. The purpose of the penetrating frequency is to grab your attention. Then there's the yelp. Basically, it's an accelerated wail. You can hear it usually in heavy traffic situations, and if you still hesitate to get the way out, you'll most likely hear the air horn. The howler is a cross between low frequency and siren sound effects. That sound is used to alert vehicles up ahead to move out of the way. 
Believe it or not, the very first police car in America used a gong as its siren. That was 1899 in Akron, Ohio. At the time, the police squad was using an electrically powered buggy that went up to 16 miles an hour with its four horsepower motors. The car, if you can call it that, weighed two and a half tons, about the same weight as the average SUV today. But just a year later, during the riot of 1900, rioters pushed the car into a canal. I guess it didn't help that the buggy wasn't fast enough to outpace the people. So which country in the world has the coolest cop cars? Well, my vote goes to the United Arab Emirates. If you're a police officer in Dubai, you have the chance to get behind the wheel of a high-performance supercar. Over in Dubai, many citizens are wealthy and have hypercars, so it's not for flash, but a necessity that the Dubai police supercars are driven for hot pursuits. Well, and the flash inherently follows. Guess who holds the world's record for the fastest police car? It's a Bugatti Veyron owned by the Dubai police. They bought it in 2016 for $1.6 million. Believe it or not, it's not the only supercar in their fleet. Their lineup includes Lamborghini Aventador, Bentley GT, Aston Martin 177, several Porsche Panoramas, and several BMW i8s. And don't forget the Ferrari FF with a 6.2 liter V12 engine that outputs 651 horsepower. They're the fastest and most fashionable fleet in the world. The capital of the United Arab Emirates is at par. Abu Dhabi's newest recruit is the Lincoln Hypersport. It's only one of seven of its kind to exist in the world. Top speed is 242 miles an hour with this twin turbo flat six engine. Italians aren't too far behind. The Italy's Highway Patrol have at their disposal the Lamborghini Huracan. We're talking about a 5.2 liter V10 engine and puts out 602 horsepower. This Lambo hits 60 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds and has a top beat of 202 miles an hour. It actually replaced the Lamborghini Gallardo they previously had. Am I the only one wishing someone could organize a global cop car race? But now let's talk about American police cars. In America, the fastest police car is actually a truck. The 2021 Ford F-150 police responder is custom tailored with a cop motor, cop tires, cop suspension, cop shock absorbers, and other cop enhancements. The responder comes equipped with a 3.5 liter EcoBurst V6 engine that's coupled with a 10-speed automatic transmission and a torque on demand transfer case for the 4x4 system. But what makes it the fastest police car in the United States is that it can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. If you haven't seen my latest video, Why Ford Makes the Best Police Cars, check it out. By the way, have you heard about how Ford has been helping police officers and first responders remain safe during the pandemic? Last year, Ford developed new software for the latest models of the Ford Police Interceptor Utility. It raises the vehicle's internal temperature above 133 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than Death Valley on a hot day. And it does this for 15 minutes, which is long enough to reduce the viral concentration inside the car by more than 99%. You probably don't want to be caught napping in that car though when it kicks in. Of course, nowadays we can identify a police car just by their flashing red and blue lights. But have you wondered why police lights are red and blue? Most people assume it's because the general public associates the color red with stopping. Some studies have shown that red lights are more visible during the day and blue lights are more visible at night. Also, color red has the longest wavelength in the color spectrum, so it's best in foggy conditions. So red and blue are the best combination to alert drivers regardless of the time or day. In addition, drivers who are colorblind to red can often see blue without any problems. Let's talk about other modifications in police cars. Common custom upgrade is the alternator to support the extra power needed for the radios, lights, and surveillance equipment, and computers. To put this in context, a civilian vehicle's alternator delivers 100 amps of power, whereas the alternators in a police car can crank up to 225 amps or even more. And of course, all this extra equipment will make the car heavier, but it still must remain agile enough to pursue speeding vehicles. In order to compensate for this, there are custom modifications of the suspension and braking systems. In addition to this, police cars are remarkably customized in other ways as well. Take, for example, the Ford Police Interceptor Utility Vehicle. It has a column shifter instead of a console shifter to free up space in a console for other equipment. It also makes it easier for the officer to exit. Other customizations, including rear doors that open at different angles, so it's easier to load people in the back. Even the seats in a police car are modified to account for the officer's utility belt and everything that's on it. Here's another interesting technology. Many police cars are now equipped with data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety. Sounds very techy, but basically it's automated surveillance. To illustrate, while the police car's patrolling, the surveillance system regularly takes high-resolution images that get cross-referenced to the police database of wanted vehicles. 
The Ford Motor Company is the second largest car manufacturer in the United States. It's also the largest seller of police cars. Since the 1950s, Ford has been supplying vehicles equipped with dedicated police packages for law enforcement. According to the IHS Research Company, Ford controls more than half of the police car market. But according to Ford, this figure may be closer to two-thirds of the market. Yet its dominating position in that market is still only a small percentage of Ford's total business. Nevertheless, it's a steady stream of revenue for Ford. So this begs the question, how did Ford grab such a huge piece of this American pie? The answer may be found in an interesting trend happening not just with police departments, but also with American car buyers across the nation. More and more consumers have been switching to SUVs and crossovers in the last couple of decades. So the fact that the most popular SUV on the market has become the most popular police car should not come as a surprise. The Ford Police Interceptor Utility is based on the best-selling SUV in American history, the Ford Explorer. In fact, the Ford Police Interceptor utility accounts for 50% of all new police car sales in the United States. Thanks to its large interior and cabin space, it can be filled with a generous amount of equipment and technology. In addition, the ease of entering and exiting also helps make these a popular choice with law enforcement. But now, let's look at the history of police cars in America. Did you know that the first cop vehicle was actually a motorcycle? It wasn't until the late 19th century that cops started to use the automobile. Yet, it was simply nothing more than wagons that transported police officers from place to place. The only reason the police started using cars was because criminals started using more powerful cars. So, to keep up, the police followed suit. Initially, cars were expensive, but by the early 20th century, police cars were used to save money. With a cop car and radio, one officer could cover an area that previously required several officers on patrol. During this period, police departments purchased and then modified their own car. But these modifications were limited and crude, to say the least. The idea of a special package for a police vehicle didn't become a reality until after World War I. At that time, automakers simply offered a bundle based on the most common options and specifications ordered by police departments. In 1921, Detroit police officer Kenneth Cox, along with an engineering student named Robert Batts tried to install a radio in the backseat of a Ford Model T. Officer Cock wanted to be able to use the radio to broadcast information about incidences like stolen cars or missing persons. Can you believe that it took him six years to iron out a system? Police departments in New York City took notice and picked up the idea. As a result, a fleet of radio motor patrol cars was assembled. Let's look at some of these classic police vehicles in U.S. history. Ford first debuted a police package in 1950 when they introduced a 1938 Model 18 with a flathead V8. Chevrolet followed shortly after in 1955. Then it was Dodge in 1956. With competition in the market, Ford lost its market position in 1969. That was the year that Chrysler, with strong and reliable V8 engines, turned the tide. It was called the Chrysler Enforcer. It was a Newport four-door sedan complete with a Chrysler their police pack. The car could push out 265 horsepower and reach a top speed of 130 miles an hour. By 1970, Chrysler was making an impressive 85% of police cars in America. They set a high bar with a 7.2 Magnum V8 engine. But unfortunately for Chrysler, the fuel crisis of the 1970s put an end to the era of big engines. The last car complete with the era's Chrysler police pack was a Dodge Monaco. And the perfect send-off for this legend was its appearance in the Blues Brothers movie. By the end of the 1970s, 70s, police cars no longer came with the power that police departments needed. This era cop cars included the Ford LTD and Chevy Impala, which we can easily see in TV shows and movies of the late 70s and 80s. A popular choice for better performance and gas mods was a 1975 Chevy Nova. It was smaller, but Chevy offered its 9C1 police package and a 4.3 liter L99 V8. The Chevy Nova 9C1 was tested as a prototype for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and it soon became widely available from 1975 to 1979. Meanwhile, Ford introduced the Mustang Special Service Package in 1982. It sported a powerful 5-liter engine with an automatic or 5-speed manual transmission. Features of the Mustang police car included the radio noise suppression package, a relocated deck lid release, front disc brake rotor protection, a reinforced front floor pan, upgraded upper control arms with stronger bushings, a 130-amp alternator, and an 
air deflector, all in a Mustang. But another Ford would become the gold standard police car, the Ford Crown Victoria. It became the most widely used cop car in the United States and Canada, and it was in production for two generations between 1992 to 2011. Actually, the Ford Crown Victoria is still in use today in many places, although it is being phased out in favor of SUV. Believe it or not, many police departments were quite slow to adopt a full-size SUV. But that changed when Chevy offered a rear-wheel drive V8-powered Tahoe with police packaging. This SUV was especially popular in rural areas, even though it lacked all-wheel drive. But the fact that it was one inch lower and faster than a regular Tahoe made it a valuable tool in the hands of law enforcement. But let's get back to Ford. Today, the Ford Explorer is America's best-selling SUV. It was started back in the fall of 2010 when Ford introduced a special version of the fifth generation Explorer SUV called the Police Interceptor Utility. For starters, while standard SUVs were more prone to rollovers at high speeds, Ford solved this problem with the Police Interceptor Utility. They accomplished this by making changes like moving to a unibody design, lower ride height, specially tuned suspension, improved cooling systems, and reinforced brakes, all of which added vehicle stability at high speeds. Last year, Ford introduced the Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid. We're talking about 200 185 horsepower naturally aspirated V8 and a 44 horsepower electric motor for a total of 318 horsepower. The EPA estimates a fuel economy rating at 24 mile per gallon combined, making it 41% better than the previous 3.7 liter V6 police interceptor utility. Ford claimed that each hybrid could save police departments between 3,500 and 5,700 in annual fuel costs alone. So imagine the savings for a police department like New York City, which has 10,000 active police cars on duty. Furthermore, the car is compelling because of its range of innovative features, like they have proof front seats and even a coronavirus killing heater. It isn't hard to see why Ford has managed to stay ahead of Chevy and Dodge in the police vehicle market. Did you know that the Force Police Interceptor Utility is the fastest and most aggressive police car patrolling American streets today? The top spec SUV offers a three liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6 engine. We're talking 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. It has a top speed of 150 miles an hour, can reach 60 miles an hour in just 5.8 seconds. The hybrid all-wheel drive police interceptor utility can reach 60 in 7.2 seconds, and it's faster than the Dodge Durango Pursuit, which does 0 to 60 in 18.3 seconds. And that's with a V8. Or compare that with Chevrolet Tahoe, which takes 20.2 seconds. So some people wonder, should I buy a retired police car? To put it bluntly, yes and no. If you're fortunate, maybe you can find a used patrol car that spent most of its time on long, straight, open roads in the country. But it's more likely you'll find one that's been very well used or abused. You probably sat idling for hours and hours, the air conditioning working constantly. The battery could be very used due to a constantly working radio. The doors, glove box, and trunk were likely used constantly, being opened and closed. In fact, everything inside the cabin would have been used many times during each shift, even if the police car was simply idling. Not to mention the V8 makes it a big gas guzzler. So if you ask yourself whether you're ready for that. So why do some people want to buy a retired police car anyway? There's several reasons. It's cheaper to buy a retired cop car car for a fraction of the price of an equivalent model that wasn't pre-owned by law enforcement. Most cop cars are powerful V8s. Some were tuned to be faster than the civilian version. And you're not going to find any small displacement turbo engines under the hood. So considering the power you get for those wheels at a cheaper price, you could say there's value there. Also, these vehicles have been serviced with no expenses spared throughout their entire working life. So its maintenance history will be second to none. That all said, an next cop car most likely will have lots of miles on it. By the way, you should be aware that unique features often increase the sales value rather than lowering it. Features like poaching bumpers, headlights, rear window grills, even an odd model with a full rear grill can drive up the asking price for these vehicles at auction. So here's a question. Can you legally drive an ex-cop car? Well, it's illegal to drive a retired cop car if it still resembles a law enforcement car. And that makes sense for safety and security reasons because we don't want imposters abusing it for bad means. In order to make a retired cop car legal to drive on the road, most states mandate that the car be painted to civilian colors and that the stickers and insignia be removed. Of course, the most controversial feature is the red and blue police light bar on the roof. Regulations about that, though, differ in each state, so check it out. The most popular used cop cars in demand right now include the Chevy Tahoe, Dodge Charger, Dodge Durango, Ford Fusion, Ford Explorer, and Ford F-150. But now you tell me, have you ever bought a used cop car? Do you have any funny or horror stories of buying or owning a used cop car? Please comment below 
Solo and share. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.